So there are three things in poker that made me really change how I played and made me start winning in 1-3 games from going from a losing player to being a profitable player in those low stakes cash games. And today I wanna to share them with you. Hey guys, welcome again to the vlog. My name is Peter Rigo. I play poker here in Las Vegas, Nevada. And if you're not subscribed yet, make sure to leave a, a like and a subscribe to the video because it helps the channel a lot. And today we're gonna to go play at Resorts World. It's one of my favorite casinos to play nowadays. Uh, the action is amazing. Uh, the staff, the room, everything is super nice. And I believe it is the newest poker room in Las Vegas. I think it still is. And about the three tips, I'm gonna talk about them at the end of the video. So make sure to watch it until the end. See you guys at the casino. So for the first hand of the night, we look down at pocket tens from the big blind. There is a limp from under the gun plus one, cut off and small blind. I'm not gonna limp my hand, so I raise it up to $25 and only under the gun plus one calls. Flop comes a great one, king, jack, 10. And in this board, I could bet, I could check. I decide to go for the check and go for a check raise. And after he checks to him, he bets 15 bucks. I'm pretty much losing to ace-queen and maybe queen-nine, but are those hands really limp calling preflop? I don't think so. So I go ahead and raise it up to $55 because I think our opponent is going to be very sticky with a king and even two pair types of hand like king-jack offsuit uh, are possible in his range. But unfortunately, he just folds and we take down the first part of the night. Not bad. So for the second hand of the night, we look down at 10-9 offsuit from the button. There is a limp from the cutoff. I raise to $15 and now the big blind raises to $55. Cutoff folds and when it gets back to me, I mean, this is the thing. 10-9 off from the button is a clear fold. There is no way I'm calling here ever. So that's what I do. And you see? Yes. So it shows king queen off. So against that hand specifically, we're doing well, but after a few minutes, we look down at ace jack offsuit from the cutoff. I go ahead and raise to $12 after he folds to us and button calls. Flop comes 953. After he checks, I go ahead and bet here. I bet a small sizing, having the ace of spades, I don't think I need to go too big. So I bet $10 and he calls. Turn brings an interesting one, a four of spades. Now I go ahead and check. I think I could go for a check raise or reevaluate river. And when I check to my opponent, he bets $20. So since he's betting kind of small, less than half pot, I think uh, I'm drawing to the nuts and I still have uh, a lot of equity, even against the nine here. So I go ahead and raise to $60 and he calls. And river comes a magical deuce of spades. So now I think I can go for a bet or check and let him bluff me or bet himself but what i was thinking is having the ace of spades if he has a king of spades or maybe the queen of spades he's gonna bet himself and i think he can maybe bluff in this spot so i just decided to check and he goes all in for around 150 dollars i think i can't really figure it out in my notes so i apologize for that but obviously having the nuts i call and show and he shows us king nine with the king of spades so big cooler going our way and we got very lucky in the river that we got the good side of the cooler so up to the next hand things are really going our way this session and especially when i look down at pocket aces on the big blind under the gun plus one limps and the hijack raises to 15 dollars it's important to tell that hijack it's a very very tight player i have played with him before and small blind calls so taking in consideration that a hijack is a very tight player and he almost never raises he plays a lot of his range as a limp i think he has a pretty good hand so i want to charge him for it and i raise it to 75 dollars with under the gun plus one folds as expected and now hijack goes for the tank i got a pair but pair of deuce no good much better i'm not sure can not be the pocket king or pocket ace something what do you have? Okay. I got a good pair. You have nines. Nine Best way possible. So 
after a little longer he still takes his time and goes all in for a little over 400 dollars i think it was 450. obviously a snap call i'm not gonna slow roll him or anybody and about not slow rolling i think it comes from what i said in one of my previous videos i'm gonna leave the link in the card here it's about poker etiquette like i could ask to see his hand because you know i called him but there's no reason for it i have the nuts right aces pre-flop is the nuts no reason to slow roll people guys let's keep poker friendly and fun to everybody and he shows us ace king offsuit so our read was correct he did have a good hand but in the end, it's a cooler, right? Nothing you can do. And the board runs out and we win. A few orbits later, we looked out. Jack 10 suited from under the gun. I go ahead and raise you $12. Hijack calls, button calls, and small blind calls. So, coming far away to the flop, which comes ace 6 4. And being out of position against multiple opponents, I'm never betting. I'm gonna check my entire range, so that's what I do. And it checks through. Turn brings a six of spades. Now the small blind checks, and with just jack high, I take the lead and bet $20. I don't need to bet too big when it's moved away, so that's what I do. And only hijack calls. And river brings an interesting one, a four of diamonds. So this is the thing. This is a board that's gonna be very hard to find bluffs, right? What bluff would anybody have here in a dry pot, Double paired, ace high. With that in mind, I remember thinking that I didn't thought my opponent would 3 bet with ace jack or ace 10, so I'm blocking a lot of his uh, ace x that he could have. With those reasons in mind, I don't know if they're good reasons or not, but I go ahead and bet $45 and he folds, so we take it down. But what do you guys think? Do you think this is a good bluff or not? I'm still not sure about this one. A few orbits later, we look down at ace queen offsuit from the button. Under the gun plus one raises to $10. Cut off calls and I go ahead and squeeze to $45. Under the gun plus one folds and only the cutoff calls. So flop comes a pretty good one. Ace 10 7. Cutoff checks and I think here we have to go for a bet. But this is the thing. He has only a little over $100 in his stack. So it's very easy to put the money in on the turn or river. So I decided to check back for, you know, for make it sound that I don't have an ace. When the turn brings a deuce of clubs, he moves all in and obviously I snap call, but it's bad news, guys. He shows us pocket sevens. We're drawing that going to the river, but that's okay. When the king of spades comes, I just handle him the money and we lost, we got a, a cooler in his side when he didn't have a lot of chips, so cannot complain. This hand, I look down at ace jack offsuit from the big blind. The straddle is on, under the gun limps, and now the hijack raises to $22. In this spot, after it falls to us, I think we could go for a 3-bet or a call, but this is the thing. Uh, remember that our hand is only good depending on the opponents that we're playing against, right? The guy on the hijack was playing fairly tight, so I decided to fold. I see I don't want to call and play out of position against possible two opponents, and I don't want to three bet with my hand against a guy that is going to have a very... Uh, a very strong range so fold here lose three dollars nothing you can do but i decided to bring it in because a lot of the times you guys see me three betting very marginal hands and you know it all depends on the player and the situation so yeah up to the next hand now we look down at pocket queens from the cutoff the strato is on and there's a limp from under the gun but he meant to raise so this tells us a little bit about his range so when it falls to us, I go ahead and raise it up to $35. Small blind code calls and under the gun calls. Flop comes, king, nine, seven. Not the best for our hand, but pretty good one for our range. I think a lot of uh, the hand that is gonna call us here is gonna be king, queen, so we block a lot of the kings that he can have, that both our opponents can have, if that matter. So he checks to us, since we're gonna pretty much have a net advantage in this spot, I decided to bet with $40, like I would do with most of my range, and both players fold, so we take it down. Now we look down at pocket kings from the big blind. We cannot stop getting premiums, I guess. So, middle position raised to $50, and I raised to $60, and he snap calls. So, remember what I said at the start of the video about the timing tells? So this tells me that he has a hand that is never for betting, and it's a hand that is never folding as well, when he snap calls. So that's good to know. 
and flop comes queen eight deuce when a flop comes queen high i think a lot of the range that is going to do that that is going to instantly call a three bet and never thinking about four betting is going to have a lot of queens like ace queen maybe king queen maybe queen jack suited so with that in mind and even a lot of jacks stands and nines types of hands so with all of that in mind i decided to bet very small to charge those hands and bet 35 dollars and he folds no choose one so i give him my hand <laughs> Thank you. Close enough. And this is the thing, even though I'm giving him free information about my hand, showing him one of the cards, I'm also finding out about what he and probably the other players at the table think about me when he said that I had ace queen or ace king. So yeah, it's, it's good to know that they, they probably think that I'm true betting a very solid range. That gives us some information to the next hand that is coming up. So having in mind that we are only showing premiums and we're winning a lot of small pots without showdown. I look down at king 7 suited from the cutoff. There's two limpers and the straddle is on. I think I could go for a fold, I could go for a raise. It's late night, I'm tired, so why not? I decide to raise it up to $30 and only the hijack calls. So being in position, when the flop comes 10-3 deuce, this flop is not gonna hit any of us really. Like he could have a lot of pairs that are like 4s, 5s, 6s, but those pairs are not super excited. I go ahead and bet $25 and he folds. So we take down another small pot and book a very nice win at Resorts World. Uh, I think there's three things that I think that are the most important, especially if you're starting out and playing one three now. And the first one and the second one are kind of correlated. The first one being uh, be mindful about the rake of the game. Uh, I see a lot of games. I used to live in Los Angeles and the 1-3 there, it's a 1-3 game, a $100 cap with a $7 fixed rake, if I remember correctly. It's like, it's a game that is most likely unbeatable because the rake is so high and you're playing so shallow. So I would just say avoid those games overall. They're like very, very hard to beat. It's not about the game itself. You can have crazy action, crazy good action, but the rake is so high that it's hard to beat. And the second thing would be uh, play a solid pre-flop range. When I say solid, that doesn't mean that you should play tight. What I mean playing solid is playing consistent. Uh, talk to a coach. There's many, many, many pre-flop charts uh, on the internet. And you're gonna see that most of the casinos, at least here in Vegas, if the hand ends pre-flop, it doesn't have a rake. So that incentivizes you to three bet way more than you should and also to flat way less. So that is something that you should take in consideration when playing those states. And also the last thing would be, be confident. If you study and you think it's a good spot to bluff, bluff it off. Because more often than not, I see people that kind of like, they have hands that are clearly bluffs and they just give up and the other person would have folded. And this is the thing, I know that bluffing, uh, Life, it's kind of embarrassing because sometimes you, if you have a read and you feel confident that the guy is gonna bluff, just go for it. Because even even though if he calls, that's fine. Like it's part of the game bluffing and people just don't go for it. They don't go for the uh, the big river bats as a value or bluff because I don't know, I guess they're scared of what other people think. Just don't care, like don't mind what other people think. Sometimes you're gonna punt it off and that's okay. That's just part of the game. So. Trust your game, study, and if you feel that that's the right thing to do, do it. Don't uh, hold yourself against it because I see so many times, oh, I should have bluffed, I thought about bluffed, and it would work. And I don't know, I think sometimes, of course, you, you should uh, trust your inner instinct and give up a lot of the times, but if you have a, a spot that you have a clear read, go for it. Be confident about your game, all right? So hope you guys have enjoyed and make sure to leave a like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video.